Would you love to know how to predict what the price of a cryptocurrency is going to do within the next hour? This is the goal and the challenge that I've set for myself and I want to talk about it here and how I'm using XG Boost to make this a reality. So by watching this video, you're going to have a very good understanding of a very user-friendly machine learning algorithm that is responsible for literally making people hundreds of thousands of dollars on Kaggle. So I'm going to talk about XG Boost. You're going to learn about that. But more importantly, what I'm going to talk about is how I'm looking to apply it to crypto. Do you remember Paul the Octopus who could predict football world cup results using by the way xg boost do you remember that do you remember that being in the news with the football world cup etc very interesting what about kaggle what about all these competitions a lot of competitions have been won it's estimated 50 percent of competitions on kaggle are won using a machine learning algorithm called xg boost if you don't know what kaggle is very quickly by the way it's a place where you can run machine learning algos to analyze data and win competitions by coming up with the best predictions. So it's really, really cool site. It's also a great place to get free data. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. What I wanted to just give you an idea of very quickly is another use case for XG Boost. So the way it was taught to me is like this. And by the way, here I'm programming machine learning. So don't worry about all of this background code over here. It's not relevant for you in this video. Just get the concept right. So when I'm looking at this data set, we've got, for example, a, a bank's data set here. And a bank wants to predict something. It wants to say, hey, if I give you all this data over here, I would like you to be able to predict whether or not a customer using that data is going to stay with the bank or go with the bank. So are they going to leave the bank or are they going to stay with the bank? Please predict how likely it is that that customer is going to leave. So banks have used this for this sort of use case. And the information you might put on is geography, where's the person from, uh, their age, their salary, etc. So when we look at this data set, that is exactly what we see here. We see a person's name, their gender, their age, uh, tenure, whether or not they have a credit card, and whether or not they stayed with or left the bank. And so this is how it was taught to me. And it's really, really interesting because when you run it through the algorithm, what you notice is that this algorithm, XG Boost, can predict with 86% accuracy as to whether that person's going to leave the bank or not. So before we bring this to crypto, let's take this to football betting. Imagine not feeding in all this data we looked at here for a bank. Imagine feeding in a whole bunch of data about historical football results. So here is an example where I've got a ton of football results from, uh, let me just take you to the website very quickly. Uh, footballdata.co.uk and I've gone to historical data. Uh, so you can go there to get all that information. And so when I look at that, here's a whole history of all of these football results that have happened. Now imagine running this through an algorithm that can look through all of that data and predict whether or not and the likelihood of whether a certain team is going to win or lose in a football match. So imagine being able to do that. And is that possible? Well, the answer is, yeah, it's absolutely possible. And in fact, it's not just been done here with Paul the Octopus. Barclays Bank, by the way, they, I don't think they ever disclosed whether they used XG Boost or not, but I'm pretty sure they used what makes up XG Boost. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, Google as well. There's a fantastic talk on YouTube from someone in Google who basically built some code on how to predict football results and got 13 out of 15 games or 14 out of 15 games correct. Barclays Bank got 15 out of 15 games correct using machine learning. So, so yeah, it's absolutely possible and doable. People are using it for Kaggle. It's an enormously powerful algorithm. It's very user friendly. I mean, you can see here, here's the code. Oh, and by the way, like here's the code that relates to XG Boost. The rest is just data. So it's really, really straightforward uh, from a beginner's point of view. But how does XG, XG Boost actually work? So very quickly, I don't want to go into this for too long because because what I want to talk about is actually how we're going to apply this to crypto. And I think you're going to find that extremely interesting. And I want to show you the data I've got for that. You're going to, you're going to love it. But what you need to understand is how does XG Boost work? And when you look at a decision tree, so you know what a decision tree is. You know, here I am at the stop, yes or no, then you move to the next branch, yes or no, and you move to the next branch. This is basically a decision tree. But here you're seeing a whole bunch of mathematical functions 
that I really don't care to go into. Um, my maths is terrible, by the way. So what is better than a decision tree? Well, a massive amount of decision trees, and we call these random forests. So XG Boost is like a random forest, except it's not. It's like a random forest on steroids. It's like what Brendan Bauman drew over here. So Brendan, really, really cool design here, by the way, of this transformer. It's like sticking a bunch of random forests into a transformer who is just super cool and awesome and speeds up everything and can analyze data like nothing else you've ever seen before. That is the, that is the XG Boost machine learning algorithm, or at least that's how I understand it. So how do we apply this algorithm to crypto trading? So let, let's take a look over here at this chart very quickly. So this is Bitcoin to the dollar, but this could be pink elephants to orange monkeys. It really doesn't matter. What a lot of people are working on at the moment are deep learning algos that simulate like a game would. It simulates trading and it learns to trade uh, a particular stock or in this case, a particular crypto, or it uses a uh, long short term memory, which we spoke about in the previous video called deep learning. So go back and look at that. But the reality is, unless you've got a lot of money and a lot of computing power behind you, I don't think this is very profitable right now. What I'm not seeing is anyone figuring out a way to apply XG boost to a crypto price. Because if you think about it, the data for a crypto price is very, very different to the data of a football game, because a football game is did someone win or lose? Yes or no. That's, you know, that's a decision tree. That's how it works. So instead of trying to change the machine learning algorithm, let's stick with XG Boost and figure out a way to change the data. And that's exactly what I'm looking to do over here. And by the way, we're going to get into this in a minute. But when I say data, this is what I'm tracking right now to feed into this monster. You're going to love it. This is super cool. So let's think about what we could do. Well, we know whether or not, if you look at a cryptocurrency price chart, you know whether a price went up or down. For example, I know that that price went down. I know that that price went down. I know that that price went down, etc. And I know that, you know, this price over here went up. I know that this price went up, etc. So we know the result historically of cryptocurrency prices on whether it went up or down in a given time frame. So let's just take a, uh, for example, a one hour time frame over here. I like one hour for trading. I don't know why I just do. It's what a lot of mentors and that recommend. Who cares? Let's just look at one hour. What if we could track all the relevant data, not just to whether the price went up or down, but we also tracked all the levels of the order book, every single one on the ask, every single one on the bid, on the hour before what happened with that price. What if we tracked all of the trading history and what that was in terms of small, medium and large trades? What if we tracked volume and price? What if we also tracked the price of Bitcoin to the dollar? Um, pretend that this is a different crypto. Bitcoin to the US dollar or USDT. What if we track that as well? Because that could have an influence on price. Because the way random forests will work is they will figure out what's useful information and what's not. And so it will discard and you might have to do some massaging, but it will discard the information that's not useful. So this might be a bit confusing, but here's my idea. Here's my theory. What if we're tracking all of that information? So we've got uh, the order book information. We've got the trade history information, and there's lots of columns to do with that. We've got the price movement information. We've got whatever you want, even indicators, if you want to add them in. It doesn't matter. And then instead of putting what happened with the price in that hour, we put what happened with the price in the following hour. In other words, the theory is that the combination in a random forest of decision trees, does it have an impact on the price? So my theory is yes. And the reason why I think it does is because if the order book in this hour was extremely thin on one side, like it is right here right now on the ask, well, the chances are that it's not going to take much power to come in and, and suck the price upwards if, if this gets eaten through, etc. But for the human brain to try and work that out, and by the way, there could be other patterns here the human brain's not seeing is really difficult. So why don't we just give it to this guy? 
why don't we just feed this guy with all that data? I mean, look, he's winning half of the competitions here. He's predicting football results, etc. Why don't we just give him that data? And by the way, should we give him Bitcoin to the dollar? No, I don't think so. So the data that I'm tracking right now at Crypto Wizards is not the same data that you can get anywhere else. And the reason for that is I tried, believe me, I have tried to buy the data that will give me everything I need. So if we look at all of this data that I'm, so all, all of the trade history, the order book size, the levels of the order book, etc., the price to Bitcoin, to the dollar, everything that I think is relevant to be a deciding factor of what could happen with the price. Will it go up or down in the next hour? I couldn't get it. Even if I had all the money in the world, the, the structures are all different. The data offerings are all different. Guys, crypto is the wild west. There is so much opportunity here. Like I, I don't even know what to say. So I've just decided to track it myself. So what we're doing here is tracking all of the different cryptocurrencies uh, in terms of these five. I don't want to track Bitcoin. I just don't because there's too much media that influences Bitcoin. But Poet, for example, this is one that won't be influenced by too much media. So I'm tra um, uh, tracking Poet. So when you look at this right now, there are over three and a half or 3,400 lines of data that have so far been tracked for one hour's worth of data on each one of these. Over time, this is going to become enormously valuable because all the information that makes up what influences price from an internal point of view, not a macro, not a media, not a social media point of view, but an internal point of view is being captured in this data. And what we're going to be able to do is feed it through our Bumblebee or whatever his name is over here, our friend right over here. So how cool is that? You want to be a wizard?